Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about why the dismissive avoidant attachment style sometimes will ghost people. So I will be doing an entire series on why each attachment style might ghost people. And this entire series is not about like why it's okay that the person ghosted you, but it's really about like understanding the core patterns of what leads the specific attachment styles to tend to ghost people so that you can observe these things and you can grab some like closure out of understanding what likely might have occurred, at least in terms of a pattern format that I've observed many, many times over with each of the different individual attachment styles. And that will help to give you closure at the end. And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna go through and put a script together and, and I'll share a script with you in terms of something you can say if you've been ghosted by this specific attachment style to gain closure and hopefully open up dialogue with this person in a way not to like then rehash the relationship or rekindle it, but to actually be able to look at the relationship and go, you know, here's something I can say. And, and the script is designed to basically get a response um, from this person so that you can have that extra bit of closure. So I'll dive into that. Um, before I do, we are still doing our sale right now to support our community. We also just launched our lifetime memberships because literally we've never had more requests for anything inside of the school. Um, so, so very excited about that. And for the month of September, we are doing 50% off of our lifetime memberships. Um, so that basically gives you access to every single course ever, um, that we've put out and every single course we will be putting out because we keep putting out two courses every single month. Um, and then all the, the live webinars in there, the four live Q and A's a week, the resource library, our community discussion forums and group, our discord chat channel in there between members, all of it, um, comes together in there and our collaboration collection. So all the extra courses we do with other individuals in there too. So, um, if you want to join just for the 25% off, the with you coupon code is, um, I'll put it in the description box below and a link on this video. And then um, you'll also be able to see on that main page our lifetime membership. So very excited um, that those are up. And let's talk about this stuff. Okay, so first and foremost, like I said, this isn't a video about why it's okay if the dismissal wouldn't ghosted you. This is a pattern. This is me explaining root causes of patterns I've observed through asking all these questions to people who have done this. Um, and we're going to go through that and then a script to try to change the, the results of your experience. So first and foremost, you have to remember that dismissive avoidance, they experience relationships and connection in relationships is basically like their feelings for a person minus their fears. And you can think of this as like an equation. So if you have a dismissive avoidant who's eight out of 10 interested, but then their fears are a seven, you're going to see like this, this one out of 10 version of the person in terms of how much they move towards the relationship. And the, the feelings change in a relationship, or sorry, the fears change in a relationship for dismissive avoidance because of a couple of different reasons. So number one, um, it can be that you trip a, a fear wire. So for example, maybe you mention something about how you expect vulnerability. Maybe you mentioned something early in the dating phase of a relationship about um, um, commitment or maybe about um, you know, them not being capable or good enough at relationships or, or criticizing them or something where it makes them feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to operate relationships. Something's wrong with me. I'm defective. And it confirms those subconscious fears that they're feeling or, oh my gosh, vulnerability is unsafe. Commitment is going to make me trap these different fears that they have because of their history of, of relationship experiences. And so you can see, you can either trip a fear wire and then all of a sudden you're seeing the feelings minus the fears. And those fears are actually showing up because sometimes they don't really show up for the DA in the dating phase. Um, or you can just see the fear showing up because of the natural life cycle and progression in a relationship. So for example, like what you'll often see is that as the dating phase goes into the honeymoon phase and then the neurochemicals die down in the honeymoon phase of a relationship, then we can start to see the more um, fearing version of the dismissive avoidant because those neurochemicals are, are starting to come down. It's a natural progression to be more vulnerable, to share more as you progress into the relationship. And you might be doing that and then they'll intuitively know like oh it's my turn to be doing this and then if they're not showing up to do that or if they feel like there's pressure or expectation to do that they can start having those fear wires tripped and want to withdraw as well 
So those are some of the like underlying root reasons that these things can take place, but that's primary. Like then other things have to also be in the mix for the ghosting to actually happen. So then what usually takes place is when either the person doesn't see something as a fit because maybe you guys aren't a match or maybe it's just not working in terms of your chemistry or interactions, etc. Um, or those fear wires are tripped or, or the things are coming up in the progression of a relationship, then usually dismissive avoidant fears conflict. It's very common for dismissive avoidance to be very conflict adverse. And so what we'll, what you'll see is that they don't want to have the conversation. They're scared. They don't want to have that conversation of like, you know, I'm not interested in, in this relationship anymore and the romantic feelings have died off and, and things like that, okay? So then they'll not say anything to avoid that conflict. Another big thing you might see is that they feel like they don't know how to say it or what to say and they don't have the words to properly communicate and when that's there, then you're gonna see as well that a dismissal void just kind of retracts from the experience. But another thing we might see also is that sometimes dismissive avoidance will feel like they shouldn't have to explain themselves and that they don't owe somebody anything. And I know that can sound like a harsh mentality, but when you put it into context and, and work to understand where it comes from, what you'll often see is dismissive avoidance feel like, you know, nobody's not going to look out for their needs in a relationship because that hasn't been their experience in the past. And so they usually carry this belief that says, well, like, I have to be fully self-reliant, so why should I have to, you know, it, meet your needs when you're not going to meet mine? And it's an assumed you're not going to meet mine. Often somebody's like so eager to meet the person's needs, but um, the dismissive one will often be like, oh, well, I don't see you meeting, you know, my needs in the future, or I don't think relationships are about that or like that because that hasn't been my my experience. And so why should I? meet your needs when you're not going to meet mine if I'm not interested in pursuing the relationship. So it's sort of this like equilibration thing happening at a deeper level. And then if they feel like the relationship will be imbalanced because they feel like there's no point in having an exchange of needs because they've never really had that experience in their close caregiving relationships, then there's going to be this, this resistance to explaining themselves because you know, like, why are we doing any of that? That seems like an injustice to the person who's so self-reliant that they won't ask their needs from others or request them or allow themselves to fully receive them in certain instances. So, so that's all of that. And those are the core reasons. Um, and then one other thing I will say too, is often dismissive avoidance don't take go being ghosted that badly. And we always project from our perception as people. And so, it's easy to look at a situation and um, go, okay, you know, that wouldn't hurt me that much, so it's not a big deal over here. And often because dismissive ones are so self-reliant and so independent, you know, they wouldn't be that hurt if they were ghosted, not in all cases, but in a lot. And so they naturally think, okay, well, other people might not be either. So those are sort of the core underlying reasons. By the way, I'm just going to make a little comment here or a disclaimer and say, please, everybody be nice to the dismissal avoidance in the comments below. I will say this in every video, um, but this isn't, this is the purpose of these videos is for like your education, your understanding, so you can gain closure. You can make informed decisions about who you want to date or how you want to respond to situations in dating and relationships. Um, but it's not a place to, to say negative things or, or mean things about people. Everybody's on their journey. Everybody's healing. Everybody who is an insecure attachment style has experienced some kind of pain that they're, you know, that still exists within them that they have to work through and heal in order to have, you know, fully thriving relationships to a certain degree. Um, and so let's all just be gentle and mindful about that, please. So let's talk about the script. So something you can say to a dismissive avoidant in terms of like, if this has happened, you can say something along these lines. Hey, I noticed our communication has ended and I know that not everybody is a perfect fit for one another and I'm okay with that. I'm not upset, but I want you to know I think really highly of you and I enjoyed our interactions and would at least like to wish you the best. I would appreciate if you could do the same so we can end this dynamic on good terms. And the reason you wanna say something like that is because of a few things. Number one, you're addressing the problem in a non-confrontational way. Remember, dismissive avoidance are afraid of confrontation. So you're saying, I noticed our communication has ended. I know not everybody's a perfect fit. I'm okay with that. I'm not upset with you. But I think really highly of you, dismissal avoidance do like um, feeling um, significant to a certain degree or at least like feeling like they matter or that, that um, 
they're, they just like, words of affirmation can be a love language for them for sure. Um, because a lot of that like emotional vulnerability wasn't, so that can be sort of the next closest thing. And so saying something nice is also saying like, not only do I come in peace, but I appreciate you. Like I, I think nicely of you. Um, and here's what I want or need. You know, I, I want to wish you the best and, and I want you to do the same. So you're giving them direction on how to communicate, which is obviously something they're, they're often missing and not really knowing like how to show up for. And that's really important to do as well, because now you have knocked out the fear of the, the confrontation. You've given them direction when they feel like they don't know what to say or do. And you've validated them to let you, them know, hey, I want things to end on good terms. And if you do this, this is how you are most likely to get a response. And again, I'm not here saying we should open the relationship. I don't advise that in this situation. Um, but what I do advise is you doing all the work to get the closure that you can and you expressing what you need in the way that's going to get the most heard by the dismissive avoidant as it will in this case. So I hope that all makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel. It would mean so much to me. And I will see you in the next video.